the focus of this lesson is on the circulatory system. So you think circulatory, so we got to get things moving around, and that relates directly to the goal. So the goal for the circulatory system is the transportation, okay, so transportation, moving things around, of nutrients, gases, and wastes to and from cells. So obviously nutrients, some nutrients want to come to the cells, and then gases, you know, your cells need oxygen, they want to get rid of carbon dioxide, and then all of the waste that your cells produce, all of that needs to um, get through your body somehow. So that's what your circulatory system does. We have what's called a closed circulatory system, which basically means your blood is always enclosed, right? So the closed part within vessels. And some of those vessels are really thick. Some are very, very, very small, like capillaries. Um, but it always travels through these vessels. And then the heart is responsible for pumping the blood to move throughout your body. Um, this is different than if you think like a lobster has what's called an open circulatory system. So it has a heart, um, but then the blood is basically pumped into like cavities throughout the body, um, much less efficient. So yay, closed circulatory system. And let's actually look at how hearts have evolved. So this last picture down here is showing a um, heart of humans and birds. But let's talk about how it's kind of changed. So up here in lungfish, okay, the heart is made up of just two chambers, a ventricle and an atria. And that's it. Whereas, let's switch colors here, make it a little bit easier. In amphibians, so like a frog, there are three chambers. There's a right atrium and a left atrium, but then just one ventricle. So you can see what happens is the blood that's deoxygenated, so blood that's coming from your body that doesn't have oxygen in it, gets pumped in. And blood that is coming from the lungs, so it has lots of oxygen, gets pumped in, but then it mixes together. So then the blood that goes throughout the body um, is mixed up, so it doesn't have as much oxygen as it could, ideally. In a reptile, so if we go down here, they have four chambers, but they're not completely divided, because you can see right here the ventricles. Um, there are two ventricles, but they're not completely divided off, so there's an opening between the two, so the blood is still mixing. Whereas in our heart right here, we have four chambers, so the deoxygenated blood and the oxygenated blood don't mix, and that's a wonderful thing. So let's talk about those four chambers of our heart. So you've probably heard that your heart is a very, very strong muscle, very rhythmic contractions, part of the autonomic nervous system, and it's responsible for actually moving the blood, pumping the blood throughout your body. And it consists of four chambers. There's the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium, and the left ventricle. So notice the atria are on top, the ventricles are on the bottom, and remind me in class, I'll show you a little trick to remember. Atria on top, ventricles on the bottom, and just involves your hands. So remind me in class, I'll show you that. Um, the right side of your heart, right here, deals with deoxygenated blood, so blood that is coming from the body, and then it pumps to the lungs. And then the left side of your heart, over here, is dealing with oxygenated blood. So blood that is coming from your lungs, it's very rich in oxygen, and then it gets pumped to your body. We'll talk about how that happens in a moment. First, let's talk about blood vessels. So you have three major types of blood vessels, arteries, veins, and capillaries. Okay? Arteries carry blood away from the heart. Arteries away okay? and to your body. Veins carry blood towards your heart. There's no trick to remember that. Just if you remember arteries are away, then veins are going towards your heart. Capillaries are the really tiny blood vessels, and this is where the exchange of gases and nutrients and wastes actually happens. We'll talk about this oxygen-carbon dioxide exchange um, next class when we talk about the respiratory system. So blood travels away from your heart through arteries, into capillaries, and then back to your heart through veins. Blood is red because of the hemoglobin, which is a protein which is actually made up of four proteins that are stuck together in a quaternary structure um, in your red blood cells. And there's also iron involved in there. That's why it's very important that you get enough iron. It helps to bind the oxygen to the hemoglobin. And when oxygen binds to the hemoglobin, it causes the blood to turn red. So there you go. That's why your blood is red. 
Um, in all of our pictures, we kind of show oxygen-rich blood or oxygenated blood as being red and then deoxygenated or oxygen-poor blood as being blue. You know, blood without oxygen isn't blue, but it's not as bright red. So this is just kind of a nice little cartoon way of showing it. So generally speaking, arteries carry oxygenated blood away from the heart, right, to the rest of the body where the oxygen will be used. And veins carry deoxygenated blood towards the heart. The one exception, or the two exceptions, are the pulmonary artery and the pulmonary vein. Pulmonary means it refers to your lungs. So the pulmonary artery is carrying blood away from the heart and towards the lungs. So that blood needs to get oxygen. Okay, so it's deoxygenated. And then the pulmonary vein, right, carrying blood towards the heart because it's a vein, that is very oxygen rich because it's just come from the lungs. Um, so those are the only exceptions to that general rule. You know, we think about the circulatory system, you think your hearts and your arteries and veins, but there are two other really important organs involved in your circulatory system, your kidneys and your liver. Okay. So we already talked about your liver and its role in the digestive system and producing the bile, which helps your body to break down and store fats. Um, your liver also is responsible for removing toxic compounds, okay, which is one of the reasons that you might, um, if someone has been, you know, someone's an alcoholic and has a history of alcohol abuse, they might have liver damage or cirrhosis of the liver because the liver basically has been overworked to remove those toxic compounds. So that's one important organ. The kidneys, they remove waste, um, specifically nitrogenous waste, and they help to regulate the water level. So when you have a lot of water in your blood, kidneys remove them, and then your kidneys are connected um, they're part of your excretory system, so the, all of those nitrogenous wastes and water combine to form urine, which then you can excrete. So blood, as it pu is pumped away from the heart, will also sometimes travel through your kidneys and through your liver. So here are the kidneys, here's the liver, um, for those kind of regulatory features. All right, you do not need to write this down, but I want you to just kind of follow along. So hopefully you can see right here. Um, hopefully see it right here, making it big, and we're focusing in right here on the aorta, which is the largest artery from your heart, big artery, and that's where blood leaves your heart, so it's, it has a lot of oxygen, and let's say it's going to go down through your arteries all the way down to your little tiny toe on your right foot, travels in th now goes into the capillaries, oxygen is being removed, okay? and carbon dioxide is coming into the blood cells. We'll talk about how that happens next class. And that travels through the veins back towards your heart into the vena cava. Okay, that's the large vein. Goes into the right atrium, gets pumped into the right ventricle, and then pumped into the pulmonary artery, the only artery that carries deoxygenated blood, into your lungs. Here, carbon dioxide leaves the blood oxygen enters the blood, again we'll talk about that next class with the respiratory system, then travels through the pulmonary vein into the left atrium, left ventricle, and then back through the aorta. Then maybe it goes up into your head, same thing happens, and travels down and back through your lungs and back into your heart, and then maybe, oh, we got to go through the digestive system and pick up some nutrients from the small intestines, and then through the liver, to remove some of those toxic things that you've been eating that you shouldn't be eating, and then back into your heart, and so on and so on through the lungs. So that's the path that blood is always traveling. So it's always being pumped through that closed system.